listen to that drag. <laughs> Episode. Just uh, got out here in the rips on the Fishaholic rig, and uh, we got a beautiful morning. Like, not a breath of wind out here, and uh, finally, I'm able to come out in the boat and just do some fun fishing, kind of just a solo mission. I've been doing a lot of like light tackle inshore charters recently, and uh, that's fun too. You know, putting a lot of uh, fans or customers on uh, some trophy stripers, but occasionally, of course, like I got to get out here. Uh, and just fish for myself and uh, that's what uh, today's fishing mission is going to pretty much be so let's uh, start plugging away and see what we can catch all right well I'm marking some fish real tight to the bottom already looks like some nice size striped uh, bass and I've got a two ounce chartreuse SNS John Skinner bucktail tied on right now and we're just going to take one of these little otter tails and thread this on the hook and I'm just gonna split the tail of this otter tail there we go that looks good that'll just give it a little bit more tail action we're drifting at about two and a half miles an hour right now I'm in 30 feet of water I'm just gonna get this bucktail all the way down to the bottom to start. That's where these stripers are hanging out. And once I feel it hit the bottom, I'll just jig it up. And then we're gonna just do some real aggressive jigs, like right below the boat. Hmm. Just went through a good body of fish, didn't have a bite. I'm gonna try casting, getting it to the bottom and then working it back to the boat along the bottom. Sometimes uh, that kind of retrieval will work a little better because it, you know, it'll make it look like something that's trying to, you know, flee away from these fish that are hanging in the current here. But same thing though. Once I get it to the bottom, then I'll start fishing it. There's one. Got him. Not a good big fish, but it's a start. All right, there he is. First one to hit the dot deck. On a two ounce Skinner Bucktail, solid 30 inch slot right there. All right, let's get back down there. I'm hoping we'll get slammed by you know, something 30 plus pounds this morning. a lot bigger than a slot right there. Oh yeah. Whew. Oh. It's that rod bouncing is just him shaking his big head. Oh man. Woo this is probably a 30 plus pounder. Oh. Whew. My arms are gonna be tired later. Oh, she's going right back down for the bottom. 
Come on, big girl. Come on. Come on. I feel like I'm mini tuna fishing sometimes doing this. <laughs> this water's still in like the low 60s, so these cow bass are all charged up. There she is. Oh. Big old bass right there. Oh. We'll put her on the deck it bump board, get a quick little measure. 47 incher. All right, here's uh, one last closer look. This pig bass right here. Let's get her back and see if we can upgrade from a 47 incher. It'll be tough, but I think we can do it. So what I do with these big fish is I like to just hold them right side up in the water. And then being that I have a, a smaller boat, I can put the engine in and out of gear just to flow some water over this fish's gills. And then she goes straight down just like that. Woo. All right, back up for another drift. Let's do it again. Oh my gosh. That didn't take long. Wow. Oh, that was quick. This is like right on the same spot where we had that first smaller one. Oh man. Woo! Yeah, you just gotta love that sound. <laughs> Definitely wakes me up in the morning. <laughs> Absolutely swallowed the bucktail. Wait, so you gotta see how deep this fish ate this bucky. Oh no, she didn't like the side of the side of the boat. Check out how deep this fish ate this bucky. Look at that. I'm gonna have to stick my whole hand inside there just to pop that bucky out. <laughs> Her mouth like engulfs my hand. Oh. All right. Let's get a measurement on this big girl. All right, right there, mouth is on the zero. Pinching the tail. She's like, oh well, like an eighth inch, I would say, shy of 49 inches. All right, well, <laughs> this one is gonna be hard to beat, but can we hit 49 and hit 50 today? It'd be pretty sweet if we can. Let's get her back. Down she goes. Whoa. Just cranking it up. Something followed it and ate it. Oh, it's a bluefish. Oh my gosh. Come on, buddy. Oh, he just bit off the otter tail. One day I was out here, like the same thing happened. Reeled up and caught a little blue like this. <laughs> but uh, a giant bass followed him up and was like, trying to eat the back end of them and also trying to eat like the bucktail hanging out of his mouth. That was kind of cool to see. The bass was probably angry. The bluefish got his snack before he did. All right, well, since we lost that otter tail to that blue, I'm thinking, why don't we try maybe a fat cow jig strip?
this big one here that's kind of like got like a curly tail. So it'll have a little bit different tail action down there. Oh, that looks so good. So I casted it out and worked it back along the bottom and then once I got closer to the boat I dropped it back down and then just started popping it. Whew, this guy cracked it right on the drop just like he's supposed to. bad right there see ya all right well we drifted and jigged a little bit further no other bites so we got to go back up so we got out here probably about two or three hours into the incoming tide so now we've already been out here for probably about an hour hour and a half so this tide's already starting to ease up just a little bit but luckily it's uh, a day or two I think before the full moon so it's uh, running harder than like what it normally would be at this point in the tide if say we had like a, a half moon or uh, you know just a little sliver so that's good so we still have a, a good window to get that 50 inch or we're after there he is on the cast see you bud There he is. Oh my gosh. Oh. No, did we lose him? Or is he swimming towards me? Oh, he's swimming towards me. Oh my gosh. What? This is a big fish. Really big. Oh. Please stay hooked. You know it's a big bass when they can swim at you fast enough. Oh, that, uh, you think that they came off like that? Oh my gosh. Come on, big girl. Stay hooked. Oh yeah. Whoo! Getting our workout in today. Oh. Oh my gosh. This fish is still controlling this fight. Even though I Pulled her right below the boat. She's not coming up yet. Oh my gosh. Oh boy. Oh boy. Come on. Be the 50 incher that we're after. Come on. Hey, what's going on, Dave? <laughs> I'm getting them. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh yeah. Hmm. I don't know. This might be another 47 to 48 incher. She just had a little attitude with how she was fighting in the beginning. Hitting hard, running and swimming at me. Bunch of thought I lost you a couple times, girl. There she is. Right in the top of the mouth. Bring her over to the Decket bump board. Just 
about 46 inches. Huh. Weird. I thought she'd be bigger. She fought harder than the other two big ones we caught. Some fish just have that attitude. Oh, I love those healthy releases like that. But you gotta be quick with them. You know, you got probably about like a 30 second a minute window, I would say, to measure the fish, take a photo, and then get them back in the water right away. I'm gonna go right back up to where we caught that one because maybe a couple of her sisters are there too, older sisters. get this bucktail right down by those same boulders where we got that last one. I've been out here so many times I can identify like each individual rock just based on its boil with the current going over it. Actually we, I came up for another drift and I moved over a little bit. The boulders that we the boulder that we caught that fish off was over there. right in the same spot oh yeah oh this might be your older sister oh, she's trying to get into those boulders oh, can't let her even with the hundred pound leader I'm using she could easily rub it off on a rock Please be the 50 incher. Come on, baby. Oh, she is staying like glued to that bottom. Oh, it is a giant. Definitely biggest of the day. It's gotta be. Oh, come on, baby girl. is oh, okay there she is oh man oh I'm so tired okay at the zero I don't believe it. <laughs> like 48 and three quarters again. All right, well, that was sweet. Caught that fish basically right in the same like boulder zone as the uh, 46 incher. And uh, it's just a shame that fish like fought like a 50 incher, but uh, wasn't a 50 incher. And uh, had a little bit of like abrasive abrasion here maybe that fish uh got close to a rock or it could have been from the bluefish but uh yeah just gonna retie and i am actually using a 100 pound mono leader just because uh i just know uh, the kind of fish we're gonna be tangling into and uh, being that i'm you know fishing solo today it just helps having a little extra heavier line to kind of put a little more power to them all right, let's go back up. There he is. Oh. 
I wish bluefish just didn't have the teeth. Like, I would love catching them if uh, they didn't destroy the buckies. Like, dang. Oh, there he is. And bucktail still works, <laughs> even with less hair on it. And that's just because they're really chewing right now. There she is. Wow. This one literally almost swallowed it. Look how deep she ate that. That is insane. So this drift, we're gonna try something different. I went up a little bit further, went a little bit deeper water to start, and I uh, actually just took off the Skinner Bucky because I wanted to try you know, a larger Bucky for hopefully a slightly larger bite. And yesterday, this bucktail here caught two fish, 49 inches, and many others. And uh, this jig kind of has a cool backstory because uh, I would say the jig head itself uh, my dad and I bought probably like 15 years ago, maybe 20 years ago. We had it for a really long time. Like since I was a little kid, we had like, you know, maybe 50 or 60 of them because we would, you know, fish below the Highlands Bridge actually in Jersey with just the bare jig head and say a shad or a sluggo. And uh, once they put in the new Highlands Bridge, you know, we haven't really fished it in a long time and that I don't really like spend much time in Jersey. So I sent these jig heads out to Big Bill's Bucktails and he tied up some really nice squid head bucktails with them and uh, the big bass have like really been loving them so i think it shouldn't take long to get slammed by a 40 plus incher with this jig Listen to that drag. <laughs> Never gets old. Oh. Don't find a big rock. Please don't. Please don't find a big rock. This might be the 50 incher. That's how I like to think. Like any the next bite could be the one we're after. Just gotta keep trying. Oh. Whew. Got this one right on the tongue. Sorry, baby. Another forty six incher. out there we still got plenty more to drift this is probably gonna be like one of our last drifts maybe we'll do one more after this this current's starting to ease up and uh, we're approaching slack water slack high and uh, my arm is getting shot and starving I only had one granola bar at like 4 30 a.m. you know I just There 
he is. This is a big fish, but he's not really rip and drag yet. Oh, there he goes. Woo! Oh man, right back down to the bottom. Oh, staying real deep. Got her. Oh, look at the size of that mouth. Oh, the bucky just popped out. Quick measurement on this girl here. Oh, like an eighth inch short of 49 inches. The top of the tail is touching 49 inches. The lower part was like an eighth of an inch short. Girl put up one hell of a fight. All right, we're gonna go back up and do one more drift. And uh, wow, we're gonna have to give the rig a bath when we get back. Look how slimed up it is. There he is. Right in the same spot as the last one. Oh my gosh. I'm surprised how well they're eating right now, being that like we've got very little drift. And kind of another reason why I threw this heavier bucky on so we could fish it on the cast. Oh, whew. oh my gosh, my left arm is gonna be dead. I'm gonna have to use my right arm later. Bigging on, bigging on. It's my friend Mike. Woo! <laughs> Mike's taking a picture of me. Did you get it? All right. There she goes. Oh, they're starting to make my thumb bleed. <laughs> All right, came up for one last final drift. And then we are heading on home, getting out of here. As much as I would kind of love to stay, because it's you know right now like a beautiful day. Um, you know it's not going to stay like this forever, and you know we're going to lose the incoming tide. And usually when the tide starts going out, is uh, that's like the rougher of the two tides, so things will get a, you know could get a little hairier out here. And also say if the wind picks up, which it's forecasted to, then it just will not be like anywhere like uh, what it is now. Last one here. Oh, it's another heavy one. <laughs> Please, fish gods, make it be the 50 inch we need. We need. 
Come on. I feel like I'm tuna fishing now that my arms are shot. My, my arm, one arm. Oh. Like usually when you're fighting a big tuna, you know, say like a 10 minute battle or so, then you gotta like grab it with two hands and just like hold on for the ride. Build up some energy so you can start cranking again on them. And in two days, I'm actually going tuna fishing. So this might not be good that I'm destroying my arms before going. Oh. Come here, big girl. Come on up. Oh yeah, that's a long one. Woo! This one might be 48, 49. There she is. Oh. About 46 and a half. Dang, I thought she would be a little bigger. Whoo! Is that in there? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Solid release, there she goes. Whew. Oh, I think we're done. All right, well, thanks for tuning in guys. Hope you uh, enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to uh, hit the subscribe button and smash that like button. And uh, oh man, I broke a sweat out here today and I just didn't want to take my layers off because the bite was just so hot. I didn't want to waste any time. Whew. Gorgeous day. Amazing bite, really doesn't get any better than that. And uh, I'll just kind of go over my setup that I was using today. So um, we ended up finishing the day with this three ounce uh, like squid head custom bucktail, but uh, the uh, two ounce John Skinner Bucky obviously got the job done. And uh, we were using our 5,000 Evict here. It went paired with my seven foot uh, heavy action air tsunami air wave elite um, spinning rod. And uh, this is like a perfect kayak or boat rod. And I've caught everything on this from cow bass to, you know, like 70 pound tuna. And uh, you also, you know, bluefish and jacks and big, you know, nice snook. And uh, it's probably like at least a 10 or 15 year old rod. It's, you know, going through the test of time for sure. And uh, the main line that we're using is, uh, it's like 50 pound braid, probably for, you know, 40 or 50. And then the leader is 100 pound. So uh, I decided to go to 100 pounds today because I was fishing alone. If I was fishing with somebody else, maybe I would have went with like 60 or uh, 80 or so. And I've been using 50 on a lot of the charters. So I'll also, by the way, link in the description if you want to book a light tackle inshore Montauk charter. 
but um, I've been using 50 with a lot of the charters and 60, and uh, we've been losing a couple fish in the bottom, so I just uh, really wanted to put the hammer down on them today and uh, make it happen, get it done, and uh, we didn't lose a single fish today, which, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty awesome. So thanks again for watching, and like always, live to fish, fish to live.